he's back. Hi. What? Right. Welcome to the Classic Car Channel now, the weather is set fair and it's the day of the monthly Classic Car breakfast stroke morning meeting over in Crewe so we're going to take both of these two today. So the MX-5 hasn't been before and Mrs OCC has kind of volunteered to take that so that's, that's all well and good so for a bit of variety we'll take that and we'll take the Anglia. The Dodge went last time so it's the Anglia's turn this time and hopefully it'll be a, a very pleasant day. I think the Anglia is enjoying its little day out in the sun. Sounds like a V6. Got a Maestro, Elridge. A very nice Mini. An immaculate 190 e Merc. Must have his work cut out keeping that red looking that shiny. We've got R2 here. HC Viva, Omega. Look at the paint finish on that. Let's have a look, see what's inside. So we've got a Lotus Cortina Mark 1, an early one. I think we'll have a proper look at that one later. There's a Morris 1000. A black A35, have we seen this one here before? That's really nice, isn't it? Even got a proper metal sun visor. And again, fantastic paint finish on that. Look at the shine. What a Bobby Dazzler. The Mark II console. Again, I've not seen this one here before. Behind the Ford console, we've got this Mini. And a classic car here from Blackpool, a TVR. I think we may have seen this one before. But a few, couple of months ago. A quick peek in through the roof. This is a Hyundai with an MG badge, I think. I don't know. There's that V6 Sierra. There's that TR6 that we saw pulling in before. And not this one doesn't have the fuel injection. This has got th triple Webbers on it. <laughs> Entering the gloom, we have a lovely MG. Next to the TR6, we've got this fantastic Lotus Elan SE. Sometimes we see a yellow fixed head Elan turn up here, so it'll be interesting to see if we get that here again today. There's the HA Viva, this is a regular. Harley's a big fan of these Nissan Skylines, he's quite excited to see this turn up. We've got this rare Renault 21 and an MG TF, I think this is. Oh, a couple more MX-5s. Nice Mark 1. Sorry about the shadow. We've got a Sora and a lovely red TR6. Oh, 
guessing this has got the original PI fuel injected engine, Lucas PI system. There's the car inside, there's got the triple Webbers. And these are cars you don't see all that often now. The E32 BMW 7 series. This will be a six cylinder car, I think. I used to have our two V12 versions of this, a 750i and a 750il. And they were really nice cars, to be honest. 735. So that's a three and a half litre straight six engine. Like I say, this is the E32 series, then the E38 came along afterwards. But actually, good clean examples of these are not a common sight anymore. So that's, that's nice to see, actually. Dolly Sprint, no less. Maestro. Who remembers the rally chopper? I know I do. Next to the Maestro we got here, and this rather lovely chopper, is a stunning Alpha. I've seen this one at various different classic car shows over the years, but it's a stunning little car, the 105 series Alfa Romeo. These are just beautiful little cars. Oops, shadow, shadow. A very burbly TVR. Oh, hello, fella. Look at that, Ford Edsel, wow. What a car. Here's a, another arrival I didn't see coming in. So what's this, a Series 2 E-Type? Immaculate car in white. So will that be a 4.2? Yes, 4.2. So compared to the Series 1s, obviously the Series 1s that start out was a 3.8 anyway. And these are bigger back lights. Also they have the bigger front turn signals as well. And the exposed headlamps. Next to the Jaguar E-Type, a much modified Ford Pop or Anglia. And a Plymouth. There's that Dolly next to the Lotus. There's a Maestro so pulling in before, nice blue one. And there's a TR6. Well, right, let's have a look under the bonnet of this one. We've seen the one on Triple Webbers. Immaculate. That's the Capri we saw coming in before, 2.8i. Took the way over here, we have a fantastic Series 2 or 2A Land Rover. All the kit. Lovely amount of wear on this.
And still they come in. We've got an XJ40 Jaguar here. Classic Jag of the 1980s, I would guess. Or early 1990s. It's not often you see a good one of these now. Talking of Jaguars, we've got a Series 2 Daimler OFC 406T. The Mini just pulled in, Mini Cooper. Another MX-5. Great paint job. I mean, it's not often you see a Series 2 XJ looking this smart. Obviously it's got the Daimler fluted grille. There weren't too many differences between the Daimler and the Jaguar versions. Like I say, it's got the Kent alley wheels, which were an option back in the day. The side strips as well, I think that was probably a Daimler thing. I think these are Series 3, I think. That's beauty, that is. Lovely colour as well, such a 70s colour. I'll try and get my shadow out of the way. Robert Hughes. That's a dealer, they do a lot with uh, Immaculate XJs. I found the owner of this fantastic Daimler Series 2, it's a 4.2, he's popped the bonnet open there. So you can see the original XK engine there. That was pretty much the biggest stretch I think they did with this engine. Right, so this fantastic XJ, sir. How long have you had this one? I've had this one since 1995. I bought it uh, off a dealer. I saw the I saw the uh, Robert Hughes. Yeah, I, I bought, mean, he does a lot with XJ. Well, I bought he? it off him in 1995. Right. Um, uh, I spent a good amount of money, but it was in mm. the condition it's in now. Yeah, yeah. And all I've done is kept kept it in that good condition. Just keep on top of it. Keep sort on of top because you know the rust in it. <laughs> Whatever you do, the rust in it. I could point out where the rust is now and yeah it looks, looks lovely but there's there. always something there's so, always something in there. so a, a little bit of paint here and there but mm. it, as it stands it's been like this and on the road for for the last 26 27 years that's 71 000 miles is that the original do you think that's the original I'm miles in full is. history is it yeah mm. i've got everything about it so yeah. it's a, i mean if you buy a car from robert hughes it's a it's a pack of car i've seen his adverts yeah. i've seen his adverts it's, everywhere. A, it's a proper car so i bought mm. it from him because i wanted to buy one yeah. that i could drive and enjoy Just not not have to restore and so i've never had to yeah restore i mean it. you don't want to be welding them up all the time do you because i mean well, no. if you get if you get a bad one they, they can't yeah, be i mean bad, i'm can't not they? i'm not a massive mechanic I can do little bits but mm. you know if it needs a big job done it's got to go to somebody yeah yeah that's a Bobby Dazzler that is isn't it it's a, it's a beautiful car I love it and I've, uh, I've, like I've had it that long Let's have a quick look inside yeah open the door up cheers thanks there we go so it's a series 2 dashboard obviously so you say you've done some bits and bobs to the seats, you've treated I've, the I've, seats. I've re, the, the seats have been re, uh, re-trimmed. No, they've been re-trimmed. Oh, they've been re-trimmed, have they? Oh, the right. Leyland leather didn't have enough stitches to, uh, no. to keep doing the seams. They'd been stitched a few times in, the life, and in the end Got they you. gripped. So uh, I went to a local um, trimmer mm. and uh, we decided we couldn't save the seats. Right. But the car was biscuit interior. And oh, because, yeah, yeah. because of 20 odd years of fade, mm. 30 years of fade, we, when we put the biscuit leather in, it looked terrible. So what we did, <laughs> we went through the, um, the book of leathers mm. and uh, matched it to the interior trim. So it's, it's like faded that, the same as oh, if, right, if you look, so it, you've it matches. If you look at you. the top of the console, yeah, yeah. it blends. So you've, than, so you've matched it to the... Uh, right, got it. Got you. All plastic trim. I've matched it to the. Uh, <laughs> we matched it as best we could to the. Um, oh, that's beauty. Trip. That's a beauty. That is. Well, thanks for the quick, no for quick chat. Just have a closer look at this XJ40. It's absolutely immaculate. This 
It's our rubber bumper MGB, we saw pulling in before, MGB Roadster. I don't mind the look under the bonnet of this much, just to compare it with mine, because it's a similar age on a T. You can see this has got the UK style dashboard, which is different to the left hooker on my car. Not just the fact that it's on the other side, but the actual the whole dashboard panel is a totally different design. Now this takes me back to Triumph Spitfire Mark III on a private registration plate. It's definitely a Mark III because it's got the early back end and the raised bumper. And the Mark I and II has had the lower front bumper. The Mark I's had the lower door handles. But they all shared a very similar back end, although the Mark I and maybe II also had overriders on the rear quarter bumpers. But yeah, that really takes me back. The first car that I pieced back together was a Mark III Spitfire that ended up being red, not well, mostly red. The first car yeah, that, that I ever pieced back together, it was in a million pieces, Dad paid £25 for the whole car, which tells you what condition it was in. I spent a few years piecing it back together in between studying for my A-levels. So I've got a real soft spot for the early Spitfires. Another new arrival, Wolsey Hornet. A Porsche, a Ferrari. Lotus, is this the one that was inside? There's that little Wolsey Hornet. This is the Ultima that we saw last month, I think. Pretty wild looking car. American Corner, Dodge, Chevrolet. Ford truck, I've seen that one. And over here, oh look at this, Riley Monaco. Nice to see something pre-war here. Wow, that's gorgeous. Just have to watch my back. Still got cars arriving. It's a gorgeous car. It's nice to see one that's still a saloon because so many of these got chopped up into specials. So when you've got a rough one of these and it needs the body frame rebuilding, it often costs more than building a special and the end result is that the special will probably be worth twice what the saloon would be. These would have been either chrome or nickel plated originally. Yeah, so that the land. Great little Fiat 500 next to the Riley. Ford Ranger pickup truck here. Wow. Not seen this one before. Doing shady business since 1885. <laughs> A Lambretta. <laughs> There's a stunning Chrysler over here. Glorious black. <laughs> 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 
Wow, cries of 300. Well, I've got, I've got ten bikes. Talking of paint jobs, we've got this wonderful Mustang alongside it as well. Metro City X just pulling in. Bit of everything here. And it's not just four wheelers, we've got a few classic motorcycles here as well, the Motor Gutsy. What a stunning bike that is. Yeah. Alongside the Motor Gutsy, we've got an early Honda. <laughs> if it's classic British car, is that your thing? We've got a lovely old Rover P4. It's the Rover 90. <clears throat> oh, look at this Model Y. Look at that, two door. Ford Model Y 8 horse, long rad. Lost in Maxi. The old route masters here. Got a pooch moped. TR3A. Exterior door handles confirm that's a 3A as opposed to a 3. Here's that wonderful Ford Y type Model Y that came in before, 1936. And it shares its engine with our Anglia. That's the 8 horse 933cc Ford engine, later enlarged slightly to 1172, but the Model Y. Like I say, this is a long rad Model Y. The first Model Ys had a shorter radiator and the bumper didn't have this dip in it. They, then they went to the longer radiator and they had to put the dip on to clear the starter handle which goes through there. That's just a wonderfully original, original car. It's cars like this that get all the interest at a show like this and wherever possible if you can keep them original with the original paint that's just great. It's even got the supplying garage plaque on the dash there. Headlining scene a bit of life. Well, that's gorgeous isn't it? Again, where the wings bolt on is where they all tend to rot round here. That all looks good. And in terms of sort of pre-war small British cars, I think these are just stunning. You know, I think they just look fantastic. This is a two-door, the Tudor. They did a four-door version as well. Got a Ford Galaxy 500 here, fantastic. 
just look at the detail even on the door mirror. That's quite a machine, isn't it? Four seat. There's a lot of polishing there. There's the Adsel that we saw driving in before. Very distinctive car, a very distinctive grille on it. They weren't universally popular back in the 50s when these came out, so they didn't do brilliantly. It's an interesting lamp. But they're quite a machine. In front of the Edsel, we've got a black stag. What's this over here? We've got a Ford Escort Mark II. It's a 1600 Sport. Nice wheels. You know that's got the big cabin? There's another rare sight now, a Renault 21 Turbo. Alongside the Renault, got a very smart four door or five door out of the Metro, F registration. This 1965 VW Beetle is a recent arrival too. It's an immaculate car, this, isn't it? I like the wheels. No, it's not uh, Almost impossible. <laughs> Woolsey 1500. Back to some decent photos. <laughs> One clever thing with these 1980s Mercedes, um, I used to have an E-series, so a few of the E-Class Mercedes, the bonnet will open to a certain angle, and then if you unclip something, it goes all the way back. So you can see, the bonnet is pretty much vertical, perhaps even just beyond vertical. So it gives you really good access to the back of the engine down here. Piccadilly Radio 261. Everyone who lives in the Manchester area will remember Piccadilly Radio. Another 80s Renault. That's three Renault 21s here. I can't think. That's a Quadra. That's a four-wheel drive Renault 21 Turbo. It's on the insurance now where it says there aren't too many clean ones of these around either. The VDP 1500 based on the Austin Allegro. <coughs> Very eye catching metallic blue. Super cover. All very plush inside. So I'll have another look inside, and this uh, console, fortunately, has a bit of information in the window. So this is a low-lying car. 
You know, the Ford Consul Mark II was introduced in 1956 along with the Mark II version of its bigger six-cylinder brothers, the Zephyr and the Zodiac. That's well, really smart, that is. Here's a neat little BSA that's turned up since I was last out this part. Made in England. <laughs> Oh, it's nice to see a few British bikes here. Right, so I've just come back over to have a look at the Mark 1 Lotus Cortina and found its owner. Um, we, we had a quick chat a couple of months ago about his Escort Twin Cam and today it's the Lotus Cortina. So, this is a fairly early one then. 1963. Right. Uh, A-frame suspension. Alloy doors, boot and bonnet, and it was built by the Lotus factory rather than the Ford factory before they were in production. Because the Mark IIs were built at Ford, weren't they? Yeah, then right. they made the uh, Airflow model, which has got a different grille, different dash, and they were made by the Ford factory then. So the grille on those comes round, doesn't it? It sort of wraps That's below right. the... By the side lights. Got the you, flashes. got you. Yeah, right, right. Right. So they changed the ventilation on them, didn't they, inside? Right. Yeah, the Airflow, yeah. Right, yeah. so this is a 63. 63, yeah. When did they first start making them? Uh, very early. Uh, was it? Yeah, 63 January. Oh, was yeah. it? Right. right. Yeah, yeah. So do you know where it's been? Uh, County Durham, it come from you. Um, oh, right, cool. Yeah. Never raced or rallied? No, it's always been a road car <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it's one owned from you. Was to it? prior restoration, yeah. Was it? Yeah. Wow. I've wow. even got an original Ford handbook there. Oh, yeah, Cortina, yeah. developed by Lotus. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. No uh, history with Jim Clark? No, it's never been raced or rallied. It's just <laughs> been... Uh, Nursed and as it's come up today, like to yeah. its show condition. So you bought it in this condition, then, pretty it much. In this condition, yeah, yeah basically. Yeah, I've looked for one for a long while. And I couldn't find one not as good as this. So no, and you had the Mark II a little while ago. I had a Mark II, yeah, which I had for about 14 years, and that was a great car. Mm. Uh, the Mark II is probably a better car than the Mark One for travelling in. Is it? It's more comfort, a bit more. But this is more of like a race type car. You know, it's a bit lighter and a bit more basic. <laughs> In, in plush sides uh, inside and that kind of thing. And they were all two door, weren't they? All two door, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so they never did a four door. The very Lotus, early did ones they? had opening quarter lights, front and back. Oh, right, yeah. right. Yeah, opening quarter lights. So these back. fixed on the later ones, are they? Yeah. Oh, are they? Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. realise that. Yeah, yeah. Can we have a quick shifty inside? Yeah. Oh. Wow, it's clean in there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> all as is from the factory some had Cortina on the glove box and some had Deluxe did they? That's just how they came oh the I see count. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right. but this is a console Cortina as they call them oh is it the console? yeah that's what they built it on yeah I've seen yeah. I've seen photos of the earlier yeah, ones that's yeah. right yeah, oh, yeah. Wow, and this wow. has got the very early ones it's got the Elan engine and the mm. Elan gearbox oh, which right, he used parts for did in his factory oh, right. before they were in production wow. so this has got the little gear stick mm. as opposed to having the Waller remote which got the later one had. Oh, did it? Yeah. Right, yeah. The steering wheel, is that the original one? That's or? the original steering wheel, yeah. Yeah. Wooden rim. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. Do you know how many they made of the Mark 1s at all, roughly? Or? Uh, I can't remember now. I didn't know. I guess it was special order only, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they were built uh, for racing, weren't they, you see? Yeah. Because in 1963, Colin Chapman made one of this model. Yeah. Jim Clark took it to Alton Park mm. and he won the Gold Cup in it. Oh, did and he, he drove it there. <laughs> oh, right. Wow. So that's how good they were. Yeah. And he drove it back. Yeah. Wow. It's, a, it's a lovely car. Thank you. Yes, yeah, beautiful yeah. car that yeah. is. Yeah. Well, Have you seen the suspension? Take a picture of the suspension, can you? Can I get, can I get under there, can I? Oh, I'm not as young as I once was, you know. Let's have a look underneath. Wow, look how clean it is under here. You can see the original A-Link suspension just over there. It's as clean underneath as it is on top. Fantastic car. Oh. Lovely deep dish wheels as well. Oh, thanks. Thanks Thank for the you. guided tour of that one. Thank you. Brilliant. Yes.
So these extra bars here then, these signify the early cars, is that they're, it? They're for the strength for the back end, with oh, right. not having cartilage springs off the axle. Oh right, right. It'll be right. an A-frame, because it's got coilovers you see. Right. Shock of the coilovers. Oh right, oh, I see, yeah. Yeah. Right, so that's a, that's an early yeah, early car thing. You said, point. and then there's a hump. And there's, there's a, a hump. hump. There's a hump in the floor there where the axle top. Got you. you got see. you. That's where the fastening you see. Oh right, I see. Yeah. So we've got a V10 Audi R8. And next to that is this lovely old Carmen gear. Yes, I think that they call these the Razor Edge styling. I think they are. <coughs> 1964 car. I think we saw this one at. Was it Astle Park? I can't remember now. A very distinctive car, badged up as a Volkswagen 1500S. Isn't that a lovely little car? It's not totally impossible, but you can't have a car that's 23,000 miles and three days. It's highly unlike that. So it's common sense and you, you and me. Another Mark II Ford coming in. This is a Mark II Ford Zodiac. We've got the console inside. And now we've got a Zodiac two-tone. This is a six-cylinder car. The console was four-cylinder. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, mate. That's walking backwards. Isn't that a beauty, that is? A Zodiac Overdrive. What a lovely car that is. And the sun's come out for it, even better. Love that. No Morris Thousand, the brown one. Such a contrast of vehicles at this show. We've got the little well, we've got the Mark II Zodiac over here, we've got a Carmen gear, rear engine Volkswagen of course, R8 V10, and a front engine four cylinder Morris Minor 1000, F Reg, so what's that, late 67, 1968, somewhere around there. It's quite a rare colour, you don't see many Morris 1000s in this particular colour. It's even got a triple X zebra zoned windscreen. Very clean car. This is an unusual vehicle, a Pontiac Transport to GT. Can't say I've seen one of these in a while. Let's have a look around the back. Must be a special import because I don't think they ever sold those here. And behind that, we've got a nice Honda 350. <coughs> Scooters, 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 and more scooters. Right, let's just have a go back to this amazing looking Pontiac here. Now, the owner's lurking over here and he's uh, happy to have a quick chat about it. So, what's this story with this car then? They never sold these here normally, did they? So, no, they didn't sell them here normally, but they did sell them on mainland Europe, places like the Netherlands and Germany got them quite a lot. And you can tell this one's a European spec because it's got the orange indicators uh, and fog lights in the back oh, uh, right, to yeah. fit it. So, there's a slightly different tailgate on the European spec ones. Hmm. <laughs> So it was. It has been in the UK since new, however. So on the DVLA, it sort of says, you know, first registered in the UK, 1992. Yeah. Well, that's quite a. Th I mean, I've never seen one before. And you said there's, they brought someone brought a couple of them in. Yes. Yeah, so there's another identical red one somewhere in Buckinghamshire, um, <laughs> which I've never quite come across. But I did come across another one in a show once. Um, mm. So there, there are, I think, six or seven in the UK, and they. It was all based on the same platform as the Chevy Lumina and the Oldsmobile Silhouette. It was all the right. same shape. Right. The Pontiac was supposed to be the sporty one for the <laughs> for the lifestyle man who had a few kids. So what year is this then? Eighty. 80? Oh, 92, right, right. So that's a private yeah, that's plate. A that's a private plate. plate. Oh, yeah, that's what threw me a bit. Right, right, got you. Uh, and you spotted this online then? Yes, yeah, saw it on eBay one, one late night. Uh, and I, <laughs> I showed my wife who said, oh, that's, that's one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. Uh, and uh, so I, I bid on it anyway. And, and my wife absolutely loves it now. It's the, it's the one car out of my collection. Really? I've got a few that is, is probably number one for all of the family. That's it'll, fantastic. It'll never go. Yeah, I just love all the oddball stuff like that. You know, it's just, uh, you're never going to see another one, are you? And that's, and that's my kind of raison <laughs> Detra with buying anything. Yeah, something a bit different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I fully agree with that. But 
That's amazing. So what engine's this got then? It's is got it a 3.8 litre V6? Six, is it? V6, yeah. V6 yeah. So it's yeah. kind of Buick block. Right, V6. got you, got you. Yeah. Um, they fitted it. came with either a 3.1 or a 3.8. So I'm guessing parts wise, the mechanical stuff is fairly easy. It is actually, yeah. And, and, and for everything really, Rock Auto stocks yeah, everything rock you could auto. possibly want. So I know, I've, I've got a Jeep, a modern Jeep, well, modernish. And uh, no, they're, they're very useful. No. Well, thanks for the, uh, the quick guided tour no of this unusual Pontiac. <laughs> Right, I think we're going to go and find where our sandwiches are now. Uh, Jiminy is around somewhere doing a video for his car traction channel, so please check out that car traction, all one word, if you haven't seen it already. A little HAV was just heading off now. Bit of, bit of revving up going on somewhere. Like I say, real variety. There are a few yellow cars here today, and one of them's leaving. Talking of yellow cars, we've got this Spitfire here. This was in the last couple of months, meetings, this has been inside. But it's nice to see it outside, the Triumph 2000, of course, Mark II. This one's a regular K-Reg, so 1971, I suppose. I can hear some scooters coming, or a scooter. Something tells me this Wolseley Hornet's engine might not be original. Supercharged. There's a Mark III Spitfire going. A blast from the past, that is. A Triumph Tune twin exhaust. We've got a P38 Rangy. I think he'd drive over me and he'd never even know. You don't see many decent ones now. I've got another Mustang. What year is this one? 1966 on a D. The Roadhugger Radial GT tyres. All the period mods and bells and whistles. Excellent. Trio of Mustangs, I think. One, number two. Number three, a 65. Fruity V8. That's quite the paint job. Many, many scooters. Over here we've got a Mark 1 Fiesta. Y Reg. Didn't see this one coming in either. Must have kept my eyes open a bit better. These were Project Bobcat when these were being developed in the 1970s. How clean is that interior? Recaro seats. Everyone wanted those back in the day. It's a very straight car. Let's get around here. The Rolls is leaving. What do we have over here? Is this a Dodge? Still they come in. Well, that's a bit neat.
Chevy 3 100. Dolly sprints going. Lincoln Continental. <laughs> oh, really nice series two Jags going, or Daimler rather. So the Mark 1 Cortina is leaving, the Lotus Cortina. Mm -hmm. There goes the little black Austin A35. The Marlin. Nice little cat. People are starting to depart now, we've got the Triumph 2000. They always sound really nice. Max is going home for lunch. There's that Mark II Ford console going. <laughs> so we've got a Le Mans start for the scooters. Mighty Ford Galaxy convertibles off. <laughs> All right, well, the cars are starting to disappear now. There's a few here but I think we'll probably start wrapping things up and start heading back ourselves in just in time for lunch. Straight opener up. Uh, Vmax. See what you'll do. Is there any people behind? Yeah, there are quite a few already. We have only just gone. See those every day. <laughs> <laughs> What's that one about? Uh, 
<lacht> Speed Bumps. Was war Wandi? Was war Wandi? Oh, Kritten gelackt. Oh, da, ja. Was war Wandi? Wandi to Dakar 2005. Das ist quite cool, eigentlich. This is serious content. A Ford Anglia in Sainsbury's car park. We are pioneers. Storm. Yeah. Storm. Storm. You stalled it earlier. It's not that easy, is it? Right. I can reverse it, but I can't drive it forwards. So. <laughs> that Land Rover. L plate. <laughs> Well, I'm glad we don't have to fill up every day. Alright. It's another MG. We've seen two MGs. What a treat. That wasn't an MG. Uh, calling that an MG is an unforgivable sin. He's back. Hi. What? Right. Oh, the sun's making it go very weird. It's like pitch dark in here. Yeah. I guess that's good because if I went into the light. Ugh. Yeah, I think darkness suits you. <laughs> I'll stop wasting you now. Shifting so fast, it sounds like a sequential gearbox. <laughs> yes. I can have a scooter thing. Oh, the chopper scooter. The chopper scooter. Yes. Yeah. Chopper scooter. Yes. That's an MX5 as well, actually. Let's go have a quick look at this uh, catering van. It's a Bedford CF. A Bedford CF Mark 1, no less. Let's see if we can park it next to it and get a photograph maybe. Let's go in here. Well, we're just on the way back from crew and we saw this wonderful Bedford CF catering van so I uh, thought we'll have a quick look. There's a Trans Am going past as well. Yeah, it's always lovely to see these old vans that have been converted. There's a Renault 21 going past as well that was at the crew gathering. It's lovely to see these little Bedfords still in use and this one pops up every now and again locally and it's, uh, it's really cool.